This morning we're going to be talking to Wendy Miller. She's a graduate of the University of the West Indies who's dedicated her degree to her late daughter, Tony. Um, her only child, Tony Houghton, died three weeks shy of her 21st birthday in May 2017. And the journey's been a tough one, but she's here to share her story to inspire and motivate us. Good morning and welcome to Smile, Wendy. Good morning, Delia. Thank you so much and for speaking with me. us. Um, I, 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 I can't imagine hearing, hearing it, and since the story's come out, I know a lot of people are now asking again, and it must have opened fresh wounds, and I'm sorry I have to be a part of that process. But, but tell me a little bit about, about Tony and, and, and just this whole journey and what happened. Um, Tony was a caring, ambitious, and bright child um, when I was raising her. Yeah. We had our regular mother-daughter spats, but um, basically she used to say that all she wanted to do was to make me proud. Yeah. And for her to say that was basically anything that a mother would want to hear you know, about her, her daughter, because she did make me proud. Yeah. The illness was unexpected, Wendy. I mean, you were preparing for her to, to go overseas. Brilliant young lady. She was going to pursue a scholarship overseas. And then you find that, that, that she is not 100% well. How did that news hit you and Tony? I think Tony took it better than I did. Mm -hmm. And she knew that I was devastated when I found out that she was seriously ill. And as a consequence, she would try to assure me and say, Mom, I'm still here. And I figured, too, that's one of the reasons she hid, you know, that she was deteriorating from me because she would tell me that she's going to study with friends. And later on, I found out that, you know, she'd be in serious pain when she was there. And when they would ask her, you don't want me to call your mommy? She said, no, no, I'm OK. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she used to ride through the pain because she didn't want me to know. Yeah. Yeah. So so she did, in fact, get to overseas um, for the scholarship, but had to return because of the fact that she still was not well. Um, exactly. It must be difficult for a young person to have those types of goals, ambitions, work towards them, seem to be achieving them, and then life just hits you constantly. Um, and for a mother to see that happening, what was that like, Wendy? It must have been very hard for you. It was. And I, people think that I'm fine and I was fine. But it hit me real hard because I'm someone who is scientifically oriented. So when I found out that she was ill, I did a lot of research. So much so that when I used to have dialogue with the doctors who were treating her, they thought that I was in the medical profession because I understood the jargon and I was right there with them. Mm -hmm. And the prognosis based on my research was not good. And many people questioned why I would have allowed her to go overseas when she was ill. Mm -hmm. But the rationale for me was that since she was seriously ill and liver transplants are not done in Jamaica, the best place for her to be would have been overseas. Mm -hmm. So I still allowed her to go overseas. Yeah, one of the things about Jamaica, though, is when you have certain types of illnesses, um, financially, it's hard, hard, bad. And at one point... Um, it was difficult for both you and her, and um, she actually went went to work. Yeah, <laughs> that's the kind of person that she's just like, "Mommy, I want to work," and she went to work. So, yes. so, so, how did the news? Because you were at the hospital all the time, and I and I I know that at one point she said, "Mommy, whatever decisions you make, I know that you're going to do the best for me." And I've asked you this all the time, Wendy, that I hope you are at peace with the idea that you did do your best for her. And, and this morning, are you, are you at peace that you did? I am at peace knowing that I did my best. Mm -hmm. and, but sometimes I get caught up into the fact that, you know, she never lived to see the outpouring of love that she received. Because at the time when she passed away, 
she was at the university hospital and she was attending the university of the west indies and the entire ward was full with students because the students or classmates were the one who actually developed the gofundme flyer that um i had to raise funds for her and they took it over and um something that a lot of people didn't know she, when she went to the hospital she didn't have pneumonia but she contracted pneumonia mm -hmm. and based on the fact that she had that kind of illness they could not pump her with the antibiotics that she would have needed to overcome the illness because mm -hmm. her liver was already compromised mm -hmm. and she just the day when everything all the ducks were lining in a row i had her bag packed her passport the plane was ready to airlift her the doctors called a meeting and said look she's too, too sick to fly they are not willing to take her in such a state there's nothing else we can do for her and she died the same day mm. You recently graduated, and, and it's such a powerful thing because it's a discussion you both had. You know, Tony was yes. going gonna to do a degree. Mommy, it would be so cool if we both could graduate together. And in that time of grief, you said, I'm going to do this for Tony. What inspired that? What inspired that, Wendy? Well, I have always wanted to do something, but with her passing, I needed something that I didn't have to sit down every day and think about her. Mm. And after having invested so much money in my education, I, failing was just not an option. I mean, there were times when I failed courses, times when I couldn't find the funding. And I said, you know, I'm going to give up on this. And I said, no, I had friends and family who said, no, Wendy, you're doing well. You can go back and do over the subjects. And I did just that. And I carried it on to the end. And I said, you know, this is what Tony would have wanted, mm -hmm. and I'm doing this in her honor. What was that experience like? Because I know, as you said, she was at the university hospital. So to be on that campus all the time, to see her friends graduating, to see her friends growing up, um, what kept you going? Well, um, the, I, even though I went to Mona campus, I went to Mona campus, open campus. Okay which is a degree program, which is totally online. Good. So the only need for me to go on campus would be to do exams. exams. Mm -hmm. Additionally, not all the courses required exams. And because of the pandemic in the latter part of the course, it was totally, totally online mm -hmm. and a hundred percent assessment, meaning that you didn't have to do exams. But yes, there were times when I would see her friends post that they are graduating and I mean, I got so sad. I'm happy for them, don't get me wrong. But I'm so sad that I didn't live to see her reach that milestone because she always said, the only thing I want to do for you, mommy, is to make you proud. Mm -hmm. And regardless of how things turned out, she did make me proud. I mean, she took the illness on like a champion and, and with such grace, such grace all the way through and such light. Um, before you go, Wendy, what do you think Tony would say to you today? She'd say, awesome, mom, awesome. <laughs> Favorite word, awesome. Wendy, thank you so much for speaking with us this morning. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, Wendy Miller, she's an assistant investigator, by the way, and, and recent graduate of the University of the West Indies. Well done, well done. Up next, speaking for those with no voice.